you are dead when you can no longer sustain enough oxygen to the brain to sustain brain activity. Okay. The question is, how fast are you getting there? The better you are at managing oxygen, the slower you are accelerating towards the grave. The worse you are at managing oxygen, the faster you are accelerating towards the grave. The reason, for example, that sedentary lifestyle is the leading cause of all cause mortality, right? Sitting is the new smoking, right? Sedentary lifestyle. It's that bad for us. It's, it's that bad for you. And why is that? Because what happens when we sit and we're immobile? Our respiratory rate drops. What happens when our respiratory rate drops? Our, our O2 saturation, our oxygen level drops. What happens when our oxygen level drops? The energy that the cell has to defend itself, to repair, to divide, to live, to perform its functions drops. My, my point is that the presence of oxygen is the absence of disease because yeah. the presence of oxygen is the fuel that gives our body the capacity to defend itself. So how does your average person, and I'd consider myself just to be an average guy, mm -hmm. busy, few businesses, couple of kids, I don't live in London, I commute in, mm -hmm. like time is a precious resource for me. Yes. How can I increase the amount of oxygen to make a tangible difference mm. to my physical health? So you do three things. Number one, um, learn to do a simple breathwork technique. I use a, a breathwork technique called Wim Hof. Um, I believe I've gone well over four years without missing a single day. The breath work is the one thing um, that I will absolutely not miss. Not once, not ever, not for any reason. I will miss a commercial flight to not miss breath work. That's how important it is. Can breath work improve immunity? No question. So you can actually look at your, the strength of your immunity. And there is no question that oxygen is powering the capacity for the immune system to defend itself. So while we... Are we saying that it can slow down the aging process or even reverse the aging process? There is no question that it can slow down the aging process. Other little things like a contrast shower, forget a cold plunge, and just at the end of your shower, take your warm shower, lather up, do your thing, step out of the shower, turn it as cold as it will go, and then step into that stream and just deal with it. Deal with it for 30 seconds to a minute, right? And then you will be hormetically strengthened when you get out of there. Dry off and, and, and start your day. Hydrate with mineral waters um, and you can get a mineral salt. My favorite is called Baja Gold, B-A-J-A. -A. I think it's the best $5 biohack you'll ever have. And that bag of salt will last you 15, it will last you five years. And it has all 91 trace minerals in it. You remineralize the body. You put the sodium, the potassium, the magnesium. You the just molybdenum. put it into water, dude. Yeah, you take a half a teaspoon, you put it in eight ounces of water first thing in the morning, you stir it, and you and you whack it back. And that's the first thing you do in the morning. Mineralize and hydrate the body. Then take two fatty acids, the, the two um, um, EPA and DHA, fat, DHA fatty acids that you need, and then make sure that you supplement with an amino acid supplement, not a protein supplement. And then the other thing, that it's so important that if you don't get sleep right, nothing else really matters. You see, most people carry the state that they're in into their bed and they can't, and it's that shift change that takes them a long time to go to sleep. So one of the things that stress does, which is a rise in catecholamines, is when you lay down to go to sleep at night, um, your body tired, but your mind is awake. Right, so when you say somebody is suffering from stress, let's just define it, somebody suffering from excess catecholamines. When they're suffering from excess catecholamines, instead of going to bed at a two, they're going to bed with these levels at about a six. So what happens? Well, you're not having a fight or flight response, but you are laying in bed awake, ruminating about your day. Did I get everything on my grocery list? Did my belt match my shoes today? Should I have returned that email? What about that Instagram post I forgot to do? Right, it, just whatever the thought of the day is. Yeah. This is happening, stress is causing this wakened state. What's really dramatic, in my opinion, about sleep is- So 2025 is well underway, and I bet a lot of you like me have already started to make plans on how this can be the very best year yet. And for me, making it a great year revolves around some investment, but actually investing in myself physically and mentally. So the physical investment has been a sauna that I've just had installed at home, and already I'm absolutely loving it. But the mental investment is making sure that I take time to go traveling with my kids, Flo and Seb and Harriet, my wife, on those kind of memory-making holidays that last a lifetime. But obviously both of those goals center around needing finance. The good news is though, that's where our new partner, XTB, comes in. 
They're dedicated to empowering you on your investment journey. And that's regardless of whether your horizon is short or long term. You can maybe buy stocks and ETFs commission free. You can invest passively with investment plans, open an ISA account, earn up to 4.75% interest on uninvested funds and loads more. And the good news is it's so easy using their app. So just download the XTB app today or click the link in the description below to start making your money work for you in 2025. That it's very easy to change. It just takes a routine that you maintain some consistency with. If you shift your state quickly, the two or three minute shower, and then get in bed, you're decreasing the amount of time to fall asleep because you've shifted, you've already changed your state. Yeah. So that uh, shower is important. So I would actually get in the shower, take a warm shower, I would get as hot as it will go, I would step out of that stream, get it as cold as it will go, and only stand in that cold water for 30 seconds. This will shift your state. Darken the room as much as you possibly can. I mean, spend some time and literally surgically remove light from your room. If you have a, if you have a fire alarm, like that little light right there, take a piece of tape and put it over that, that, Even that light. Even that little light like that could make a difference. You'd be shocked the, the little amount of candle wattage that it takes passing through your eyes to raise your cortisol level. Cortisol is very responsive to light. Um, I would get an eye mask if you have an issue of darkening the room, you know, the $6 little soft eye mask. I would also um, uh, decrease the temperature in the room, 68, 69 degrees Fahrenheit. So we'll convert that to Celsius. And then the last thing I would do is I would do no screen time, no alcohol um, on the nights that you really want to get good sleep and stop eating two hours before bed. Once you're in bed, there is a breathwork technique called liquids, I mean, called uh, natural Xanax, which is very simple. It's a visualization and breathwork technique where you take a six second inhale in through your nose. You hold for three seconds. And then you take a six second exhale out through your mouth through an imaginary straw. This is gonna sound hokey, but if you imagine yourself taking the thoughts from your head and breathing them down into your lungs, and then breathing them out of your body. So when you breathe in through your nose, draw all the thoughts of your day down into your lungs. When you breathe out through your mouth, breathe them all out through your mouth. Just add this visualization technique. What I'm trying to do is take you off of the rumination of thoughts from the day. Yeah. None of that will cost you a dime. If you apply that sleep routine for the next seven days, you will dramatically improve your sleep score. By day three, your sleep score will be up 28%. Can we talk about nutrition? Absolutely. Um, it's very hard to take action or give advice without data. And the yeah. problem is that there's such a myriad of um, opinions out there. I never give even my opinion without data. I'm a huge fan of, of, of data. So I think every human being should do two tests. Um, number one, you should do what's called a genetic methylation test. The reason why you do this test is you do it once in your life. And you will never, for the rest of your life, ever guess on what your body's deficient in. It will tell you exactly what you can't produce. And you simply supplement for that deficiency. And then the other thing that you do is you look at three things in your blood work. You look at your hormone balance, your glycemic control, your blood sugar profile, and your nutrient deficiencies. 70% of the time, when you have hormone disruption, you do not need hormone therapy. You need nutrients. 